Happy Friday Eve. We have 38 degrees. That's at Metro Airport. Most of your neighborhoods a little closer to freezing right now with some patchy frost on the windshields. A couple of areas in the 20s. Sunshine today through noon brings us to 50. A couple of high clouds and 56 this afternoon, Kim. Thank you, Brandon. All right, well, here's a look at your commute this morning over on I-75. This is right at 12 mile that we're looking down at, and traffic volume still very light. Roads are clear this morning, and no accidents to worry about as you head out the door. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Kim. We'll check out this video, surveillance video. The man you see here visited a California jewelry store to look at a diamond and decided to take it, mm -hmm. take it right out with them. The only issue is he forgot to pay for it and it was all caught on camera. Was he rushing to his car to go get his money? Mm -hmm. Officers say the man ran off with a $27,000 diamond earlier this month in the city of Walnut Creek. They say that once outside, there was a getaway car driven by a female waiting for him. Wow. So far, police haven't gotten a lot of leads in their search for this man. That's pretty bold. I like, I don't understand what you were thinking. The thing I don't understand is why people forget that there's surveillance cameras everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> they have a full view of your face now. Man, oh man, not going to run for very long. It's yeah. Definitely going to get caught. It is mm -hmm. 526, and new in our next half hour, the pro sport league that wants to let athletes use weed. We'll have details on that coming up. Yeah, major league for our major professional teams here. We're talking about plus restaurant ran by an out of control driver. The frightening crash happening during the lunchtime rush. Plus working to get the water back up and running a live update on the water main repairs that are underway right now impacting those 12 Oakland County communities. That's next. They protect live from downtown Detroit. Local 4 News today at 530 starts now. It's a major step towards the efforts to fix the water emergency in Oakland County. See what's expected to happen tonight. That's coming up from our Nick Monticelli in a live report. Plus, postseason sacked. School leaders downriver tackle a tough topic, ending the winning season for youth football and the cheerleaders. Also, a frosty Friday Eve. We're waking up in... It says that. It says frosty Friday Eve right there on your screen. <laughs> We're waking up to temperatures in the 30s this morning. Our floor director, Tanya, is a Friday Eve hater. <laughs> uh, it is catch on. But it's catching on like Absolutely. wildfire. Absolutely, like wildfire. Everybody, right. thank you so much for waking up with us here on your Thursday morning, also mm -hmm. known as. Just a reminder for those of you getting confused this week. I think, if anything, Brandon, people should hate Monday Eve. Yeah. Right? What? That's a that's a tough one. Yeah, because you know Monday's looming. That one's not going to catch on. <laughs> that just seems sacrilegious. <laughs> I don't know. We can get away with that, but uh, yeah, it's just a, it's helpful, especially the Eve's Eve Wednesday. It's like, oh, uh, come on, hump day. Sometimes you can't get over the hump, but when you know it's the Eve Eve and it's coming the weekend, here we go. Bright smiles. Good morning. Hope you're waking up well. Maybe you're just getting ready for bed. Maybe you work the overnight shift like us. We have temps near freezing. That's the frost that is on the windshields out there. Not necessarily a big widespread issue on the surfaces, but 28 in Ann Arbor, 29 in Lapeer, 35 in Mount Clemens, 32 in Monroe, 36 in Harrow, Ontario. Comparing our 5 a.m. numbers today to 24 hours ago, our numbers are anywhere between five and almost 15 degrees colder this morning. We have uh, clear skies, which means temps probably still cooling over the next couple of hours. 34 at 8 a.m., 50 degrees at noon, bright skies, and 56 this afternoon with sun and a few high clouds. A pretty good looking Friday Eve. Good fall day. We've got happening today. So good morning. Everyone, it's going to be a good one and your commute looking great as well. We've got no accidents to report at this time and I'm even talking about some construction that's ending today over in Van Buren Township. We're talking about the westbound lanes of Ecorse Road right at Michigan Avenue here. That has been closed, but it's reopening today at 6 p.m. So that's always good news when construction is ending, especially when it's part of your commute. Now we want to talk about some construction over in Detroit, the north and southbound lanes of Fort Street between Oakwood and Dearborn Street. Only one lane open there. This is happening between the hours of 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. And we've got more construction to talk about over on US 23, but I'll tell you about that coming up in my next report at 544. Back to you.
All right, Kim, we'll see you then. Meanwhile, it's 532 and Detroit voters are waking up and weighing their options after Detroit's two mayoral candidates squared off right here in the local four studios for their one and only televised debate last night. Mayor Mike Duggan and his challenger, State Senator Coleman Young II, spoke on a variety of issues, including luring new business to the city like the new Amazon headquarters. So when Senator Young says we lost Amazon, we haven't lost Amazon at all. The city of Detroit is starting to win again. And 20,000 more Detroiters are working today than were working four years ago because we're working together. There he goes again, talking about what they're doing downtown or midtown. What about the neighborhoods? What about the people? You have the unemployment rate of 22% or higher in these neighborhoods. Whatever he said he's doing, it's not trickling down to the people. It's not being given out to the neighborhoods. If you would like to watch last night's entire debate, we invite you to head on over to our website at clickondetroit.com. We have it posted there in its entirety. I've right, over to you. All right, right now we want to update you on the work repair that's being done for that water main break, that big water main break in Oakland County. We know the crews have been working around the clock to get this fixed as soon as possible. Local force Nick Monticelli is joining us live now at the repair site. And Nick, for the sake of all of the people having to deal with this nightmare, are they still hoping to get things back to normal by tomorrow night? That is the plan, Avrod, and allow, allow me to be the bearer of good news this morning. You can see right behind me here, this is the hole. That is where the pipe is underground underneath the 14-mile road, and I have just been told that the new pipe is in. It is done, and pressure testing is well underway. I think the diameter of the water main was 48 inches, so it's a very, very large main. So, uh, yeah, definitely a major effort to fix it. The water main break underneath 14 Mile Road in West Bloomfield has become a bit of a tourist attraction. But a lot of people here want to see firsthand how much progress is being made, which affects how much longer they'll have to boil their water. Yesterday, the replacement pipes arrived from Illinois and crews began carefully and methodically installing them underground. Once installation of the pipe is done, they first have to pressure test it. Then the main will be disinfected and flushed, and finally, they'll test the water quality. If the test results come back clear, the boil water advisory will be lifted, and the Great Lakes Water Authority still expects that to happen by tomorrow night. In the meantime, there are still about 35,000 residents in Farmington Hills without water at all. But residents like Steve Smart are trying to keep everything in perspective. Unlike Flint, people are still suffering from, you know, main issues with their water. So with here, it's a little inconvenient if we're, you know, down for a few days, you know, we can get by. Looking live now again at the construction site, you may notice there are not a whole lot of construction workers actually working in there. That is because, again, that line is done, and it's simply a wait-and-see kind of game now to make sure that the pressure holds up, the, the uh, line doesn't bust open again, and then again, those processes begin to test the water quality and make sure it is safe to go back home. Ravrod and Rhonda, I think I can hear a collective sigh of relief throughout all of Oakland County right now. Uh, seriously, when you said that that pipe was in, you should have heard the roar from our live studio audience. Everybody was so excited, including Rhonda right over here, having to deal with that herself as well. Uh, okay, so is there any chance that things can be fixed sooner than tomorrow night? Fingers crossed. You know, I, it, it should be just fine. You know, they, they got the right line in, they did all the work properly, and they are doing this methodically and carefully to make sure that everything is done. But they will go through that 48 hour testing period to make sure the water is safe. So it shouldn't <sighs> be, it, it, it can't be any earlier than Friday night, and it shouldn't be any later than that as of right now. Okay, well, they promised us by Friday night, at least it's not being extended to Saturday, Sunday, or Monday through the weekend. So we'll, we'll take it. Nick, thank you. Right. Yeah. A lot of hard work being done there. Time now is 537. So there is a Woodhaven youth football program that will not be able to complete or compete in their postseason. The Downriver Junior Football League Executive Board upheld a decision to cancel the remainder of Woodhaven's season. Woodhaven's team was on probation after an altercation between parents occurred at one of the games. The board initially stated that they would let Woodhaven finish out their season, but overturned their decision in a meeting late last 
night. The only not only affects the football teams, but also the cheerleading squads and their comp competition will not happen either. Coaches and parents fought to save the team's season, saying the players should not have to pay for the behavior of some parents. It's about the kids. I mean, it, there has to be some other way to get the communication across so the adults change so it doesn't affect the kids. Pretty unfortunate that the kids will have to suffer. The executive board told Local 4 Woodhaven was on probation for a different incident and they had no other choice. Oh, you really feel for those kids. Uh, former NBA Commissioner David Stern says that marijuana should be taken off the league's banned substance list. Stern says that he thinks players should be allowed to do what's legal in their state. He joined Al Harrington in a documentary to discuss the medical use of marijuana. Stern saying that sports leagues can play a vital role in understanding of the plant's medical benefits. NBA spokesperson uh, says that the league's current position still remains the same. And with Halloween less than a week away, the city of Detroit is looking for candy and time donations to go hand in hand with efforts to promote family friendly activities on Halloween. Bags of individually wrapped candy can be dropped off at any police department precinct. The city is also looking for volunteers to help patrol Detroit neighborhoods and vacant structures for the next few days and nights leading up to Halloween. We definitely want to have a safe and happy holiday. Yes. Have you seen the forecast for Halloween? Uh, let's not go there. Let's just say we're hoping in the extended forecast as it gets closer, it starts layers, to change a little bit. Layers, everybody. Yes. You definitely want to no start clothes. digging Hopefully those we don't out. Have to wear I know. All right, it's 5:39 here on your Thursday morning, Friday Eve. <laughs> Another community has decided to impose new rules for trick or treating. New this morning, the age limit and a curfew that has some kids and parents complaining. Plus, new information coming out of Las Vegas in the mass shooting there. What the gunman did in his hotel room before pulling the trigger. That's next. We've extended. Welcome back. Determining a motive for the man who's responsible for one of the deadliest mass shootings in modern history continues to keep investigators real busy. Officials have looked into every detail of Stephen Paddock's life, and they haven't found anything that points to what drove him to kill 58 people in Las Vegas back on October 1st. New information shows that Paddock removed the hard drive from at least one computer that was found in his hotel room at the Mandalay Bay Resort. Investigators are continuing to hunt down that possible motive. Shocking new surveillance video shows the moment an out of control car plows right into a business in Maryland. This was a restaurant and it happened right during the rush hour. You see people were all sitting there when the car came plowing through, barreling right through the crowd, through the wall, the crowded bar area. From another angle, you can actually see some people rushing over to help those victims. The people were hurt too seriously. The driver said that her brakes went out and she lost control. All right, well, who has the most spirit in all of Metro Detroit? Well, this week we found out it's not just a spirit squad, it's their families, too. Here's a look at the Four Frenzy Best Spirit Squad of the Year. Let's go, team! Let's go, team! Let's go, team! Hundreds of schools were nominated, thousands of votes were cast. And the first place winner for the 2017 Four Frenzy Best Spirit Squad Award goes to the Roosevelt High School Bears! <laughs> The girls were thrilled about the accomplishment and say they couldn't have gotten to where they are without the support from their families who were constantly voting and encouraging the neighborhood to do the same. They all had like alarms set every hour to vote. Those are like the people like you look up at the crowd on Friday nights and they have their pom poms and they're shaking so I know that they care about cheerleading just as much as we do. These girls don't just have team spirit, they have dedication. They're practicing for at least two and a half hours every weekday to get their routines down. They also do weight training in the morning two days a week. Their main focus right now is cheering on the football team. But this spirit squad is always cheering on the Wyandotte community. It's not just about our school. We go to like surrounding schools in our district. We perform for like the special needs kids. We get out. We do many of activities. So what makes this team so unique? Sure, they're a group of talented girls, but what sets these cheerleaders apart from the rest? Our community has embraced cheerleading and the football players are amazing to our girls. We just have a really good fan base here. One, two, three, Bears! 
Wow. Oh, man. So much spirit. It doesn't it make you miss your leading? I was feeling really nostalgic <laughs> yesterday, to be honest. Oh, uh, well, congratulations. Yes. Wyandotte. That's awesome. Yes. And this week's Four Frenzy Game of the Week will actually be at Wyandotte Roosevelt High School uh -huh. as the Bears take on the Temperance Bedford Kicking Mules. So well, it's going right. to be a good one. Yes, it the, is. Yeah, the, lots the, of spirit. Wait, who? <laughs> I know, right? The Kicking I know. Mules. Oh, that team. Okay. Yes, that team and the Bears. It's going to be a good one. You're going to be there? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I wouldn't want to miss that. Teams. Yes. How's that weather going to be for football, Brandon? Well, I'll tell you, some areas are going to be playing in the rain on Friday. The way it looks right now, the uh, model data is advancing Friday rain a little, just a little sooner than we thought yesterday, but not dramatically different. We have 38 degrees outside your door right now with calm winds, and this is for most of Wayne County. We're seeing middle 30s urban heat island effect, which means a lot of concrete asphalt, a lot of highways and byways. Just keep the area a little bit warmer. A lot of our suburbs a lot closer to freezing. 34 degrees at 8 a.m. We're looking at clear skies through noon, 50 degrees, afternoon 56, and we're looking at some high clouds moving in. That's about it. It's about all we have. Tomorrow, a little warm front comes up. This is going to be sort of the spark for the showers. This area of low pressure is the storm center. It's going to be moving in our direction, enhanced by that warm front could bring us closer to 60 degrees tomorrow. However, the one problem that we see here, not today, through the model at 2.30, we're good to go. Into tomorrow, we're looking at an increase in clouds, especially during the uh, late morning, early afternoon hours. 1 p.m., the models show a couple of showers in our west zone, but I think the lion's share of this really gets going by about 7, 8 p.m., especially on the east side here, south zones, metro zone, uh, and maybe parts of the east north zone, if you know what I'm saying here. Maybe a dividing line right along 275, east of 275, Friday night getting the heaviest rain, uh, which would include uh, our Friday football frenzy. What about this? Our Halloween forecast. <laughs> Not so funny, Mr. Price. 43 degrees and windy, an isolated shower or two possible. Again, that's Tuesday, Halloween. It's going to be a cool one. Layer up with the costumes. It's going to be a cool weekend as well, but I think the rain ends Friday night into early Saturday. By 10 or 11 a.m., we should be good to go. Very autumnal, cool football weather. Tonight, we invite you to an evening under the stars. This is a Dancing with the Stars kind of event, and I'm going to be out there, uh, you know, cutting up the rug a little bit, as we showed yesterday. But it is for a great charity, Full Circle Foundation, helping special needs families. And we encourage you to check out the information on the Scene on 4 tab of Click on Detroit. You can also vote for me, your favorite meteorologist and dancer. Kim? Yes. Yep. Vote and, for B. And it's at the uh, Rooster Tail uh, tonight. It's going to be a good one, Brandon. Best of luck to you. I know I'll be casting my vote for you. All right, well, let's take a look at what's going on right now. No accidents, so we've got to talk about some construction. And this is for those of you who travel through the Madison Heights area. We've got construction over on the eastbound side of 12 Mile, right near I-75 here. Only one lane open there, so it's probably going to be slow. This is happening between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. today and tomorrow. So if you're out running errands in that area, you may see some backups. Also, I want to take a look at some construction on eastbound Michigan Avenue between I-94 and Ecorse Road. One block there until 5 o'clock today and then northbound US 23 between Barker Road and Nine Mile one lane block there. This is a nightly project happening 8 p.m. to 7 a.m. and this will continue through Saturday morning. Over to you. Alrighty, Kim, thank you. It is 550 and we are just five days away from Halloween. Mm -hmm. Do you have your costumes picked out yet? Of course, you know, every year we go all out here on Local <laughs> 4 with our costumes. It's a yearly tradition for us to dress up and then surprise you with our costumes. So how about a little throwback Thursday to circa 2015? Yeah, a little flashback Friday Eve. Rubaka. <laughs> Nick Monosolo. 
traveling through hyperspace ain't like reporting the news, farm boy. Princess Wanda. Help me, Local 4 News Today viewers. You're my only hope. Frank McSkywalker. I'm Frank McSkywalker. I'm here to rescue you. And Darth Kasumi. The Local 4 is strong with this one. I'm Princess Rhonda here on Death Star. Uh, what's, what's wrong I love with us? Being Princess Rhonda. <laughs> That's one of my favorites. A little known secret about this one she keeps that wig and wears it on the weekend. <laughs> That was from I the movie still Star Wars. That you do? Yeah. Where is it? It's in my closet. <laughs> well, that was from Star Wars, but the big question is what are we going as this year? Yes. Now, we're going to throw out a couple of little hints. Brandon here in Deep Thought about more than just the Halloween forecast. This yeah. could help you figure out what our costumes will be. And we're going to reveal this year's costume during our 6 a.m. show on Tuesday. We've kind of had a, a debate about this in the newsroom. I mean, we showed a good portion of his full costume there. We did. But I promise you. Is that you, a costume or was he just literally thinking mm -hmm. about his costume? Yeah. We'll have to wait and see. Tune in. We're going to show another another picture as well coming up in our 6 o'clock hour. So yes. stick around for that. It is 551. And next, right here on Local 4 News today, we're talking creepy and cool Halloween snacks. Yes. Kim is going to show us some unique ways to get into the spooky spirit for Thrifty Thursday. We'll be right back. Halloween. Temperatures in the middle 30s in at well, at least at Metro Airport and most of Wayne County, but we do have some upper 20s to near freezing in many spots. Cool, clear, sunny through noon, 50 degrees at lunchtime, 56 this afternoon, sun and high clouds. Kim DeGiulio doing the thrifty thing. That's right. OK, well, Halloween is Tuesday. Now that your house is probably all decorated, it's time to start making some fun Halloween snacks and treats that your kids will just love. Here's a few ideas to get you started. Turn an orange into a pumpkin by simply peeling the orange and placing a small piece of celery in the middle of the orange. Turn a basic sandwich into a jack-o'-lantern. Toast a piece of bread till golden brown. Spread mustard on the bread and add a piece of ham or turkey. Now for the fun part. In a piece of cheddar cheese, use a knife to carve out the face of a jack-o'-lantern. Get creative. Place the piece of cheese on top of the turkey or ham. Now you have a delicious open face sandwich. You can also turn a hot dog into a mummy. Start by preheating your oven to 350 degrees. Unroll a package of crescent roll dough to lay flat on a cutting board. With a pizza cutter, cut the dough into thin strips. Wrap the dough strips around the hot dog, leaving a bit of space at the top of the hot dog for the face. Once they're all wrapped up, place them in the oven for about 15 minutes or until the dough is golden brown. Use the mustard to make eyes and turn this classic hot dog into a Halloween treat. Wow. Oh <laughs> I'm like, first of all, that jack-o'-lantern was perfect in the cheese. I'm like, you did that freehanded? Yeah. It's easier than you than think. It, okay. Yeah, you can do it, right? here's the thing. Great idea. I noticed that Kim made all that food, and she didn't bring us nothing. Not one bite. So who ate all of it? It's very good. Her photographer. <laughs> no. Of course. Great idea. Thank, Thank you. you. Especially the orange. And that, that we can do. That's yeah, simple. We, yeah. That's an easy one. <laughs> well, you. speaking of Halloween, we know that trick-or-treating is what makes Halloween the fun holiday that it is mm -hmm. if you celebrate. But one North Carolina town has an age limit for it, and they're limiting it to 12 and under. Yes, it's kind of a soft rule once you get into your teenage years. No more trick-or-treating. But this rule has been on the book since 1973 here in North Carolina. But police just have only enforced it when someone complained. Well, now there is also a curfew of 9 p.m. and I guess they plan on enforcing it this year. I'm okay with an age limit, you know? And the time limit, quite frankly. Nobody wants people coming to your door you at 10 o'clock at night. That I late. know. You're like, okay, the candy's work in the gone. Yeah, <laughs> right. it's a school night. We got to get up. Right. It is 558, everybody. Coming up all new at 6 o'clock. Local stories for you from Detroit, Farmington Hills, and Southfield. Plus, we're talking about a road rage brawl, and it's caught on oh. camera. What led up to this fight that unfolded right there in the middle of the street? It's dragging them. Also, it's a serial controversy. Do you notice anything wrong with this ad? We'll tell you why. Kellogg is apologizing for the art on this cereal box when we come back. Nominate live from downtown Detroit. Local 4 News Today at 6 starts now. 
jabs thrown and accusations made. Everywhere my opponent has been, there's been a criminal investigation. Whether he was at DMC, whether he was at DPS, whether he was at Wayne County, and now with the city. A bunch of trumped up charges, a lot of attacks on me and my plans from a candidate with not a single plan of his own. Oh, it was fiery and it was passionate. This is the debate between Detroit's mayoral candidates that happened right here in the Local 4 studios last night. What voters are saying this morning. Plus, linked to ISIS, federal documents reveal a local man made bombs in support of the terrorist group. Plus, check this out. The pipe is in place. Construction crews working around the clock to get the water flowing again in Oakland County communities. Clean water. And there was a big development that just happened hours ago. We'll get you updated with that. I don't think people have been more excited to see a piece of pipe. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no. Laid right there in the Look place. Look at it. You know? It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> now they just got to wait until Friday, and hopefully everything will be all good. Yes. And welcome. Speaking of Fridays. Yeah. We're a day away. Yeah. Welcome to Friday Eve, everybody. <laughs> Thanks we for will, waking up with us, too. And we'll get you updated on the big stories this morning. But first, it is really cold. If you're getting the kids up and ready for school today, it's time to pull out the heavier coat, huh? Yeah, we started at 37, Brandon. We went up a degree and I can feel it. 38. Woo! Well, <laughs> and then everything goes back down. We're down to 36 now, so we still have another almost two hours before the sun comes up, and that is usually the coldest time of the day, right about 730, so still could drop off a little bit. A live look here at Mount Clemens, clear skies, 36 at Metro, but look at Ann Arbor, the airport in Washtenaw County, 29, 28 in Lapeer. It's freezing in Pontiac, 33 down in Monroe, 36 in Harrow, Ontario, Mount Clemens, at 33 bus stop temp right around freezing. So yeah, you'll need probably the gloves out there, but grab the shades as well. Cold in the morning, sunny through lunch and in the afternoon. It's just a few high clouds. Double nickels. The high temperature 55 degrees today, guys. Oh, that sounds chilly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I have the better news you out do. of the weather and traffic duo this All morning. Right. And that news is that we are looking good out there. Okay. So let's take a look at the maps right now <laughs> to see what we're dealing with. You can see that we've got green on our maps. That means that we are good to go. No accidents to report at this time. But this is a closer look at your commute right now. We're looking at Southfield Freeway right at 8 Mile. And it's pretty quiet out there. Traffic volumes are building a little bit from the last hour or so. But roads are drying up from that rain that we had yesterday and visibility is good. So we are good to go this Friday Eve. Yeah, I said it. All right. <laughs> well, we also want to talk about some I-696 construction. So I'll let you know about that coming up in my next report at 614. Back to you. All right, Kim, thank you. It is 603 in the fight to be Detroit's next mayor heating up as both candidates went face to face in their one and only televised debate. Yes, and at moments it actually turned personal, mm -hmm. but both Mayor Mike Duggan and challenger Coleman Young II did manage to touch on key issues that are impacting the city and the people. Local Force Inc. Monticelli shows us where both candidates stand on those issues. Well, the debate between Mayor Duggan and Senator Young was wide ranging in topics going from safety in Detroit all the way to auto insurance. But everyone agrees that both men came ready for a fight. In their first and only televised debate, the two men vying for Detroit's top job defended their records while their opponent tried to attack it. Duggan and Young II debated the challenges facing the city from neighborhoods to race and crime. I don't need uh, any statistics to know this city is not as safe as it needs to be. Put officers on the beat walking the beats. You better hope that they're walking in front of your house when you dial 911. What we have done is deploy officers to cut the response time. Whatever he's talking about doing is not working. Mothers are burying their children and Chief Craig is more interested about making the numbers work and talking about Christ's net than putting together a plan to keep the people safe. Both also addressed plans to fix Detroit's notoriously high auto insurance rates. We need to stop, we need to make sure that auto insurance companies stop charging people based on their territory. That's why as mayor, one, I'm going to sue the auto insurance company to stop this racist redlining from going on in the city of Detroit. And Senator, you ran for office and said you were going to fix it, and 10 years later, you've delivered squat. After the debate, we caught up with both candidates for their thoughts on how things went. 
I just think it's disrespectful. The fact that we only had one debate, we have all these issues that are going on. We are the most po we're the poorest city and we're the most violent city in America. We should be having more debates to discuss this issue. Went exactly as I would have predicted it to go. And, uh, uh, you know, it's been the campaign the whole time. There's uh, a lot of attacks uh, and uh, no substance on plans. And you're going to hear a little more reaction in just a few moments about this debate. But the general consensus is that there was kind of an aggressive tone throughout the entire debate. Some think a little too aggressive. In the newsroom, Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News Today. All righty, and thank you, Nick. Of course, a lot of voters are reacting, sounding off on the candidates this morning. Yes, so let's go over to Jason Carr with a look at some of the reaction we've been getting on the Local 4 Facebook page. No shortage. We have plenty of comments on the Local 4 Facebook page on last night's debate. Let us know what you think, and you did. Belinda says, Coleman Young put a lot of life into his feelings of how the people of Detroit are suffering. Barbara says, good debate! Exclamation points. Mark, as a lifelong Detroiter, I'll be voting for Duggan again. And Glenda says, Young is a vote for nothing. He is not ready. What do you think? We want to know. Tell us on social media. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you, Jason. Of course, you really need to let your voice be heard when you vote. So that is the biggest issue is the turnout. So make sure you make plans to vote. In the meantime, if you want to rewatch or watch for the first time the entire debate, it's one hour and you can watch it on our website at clickondetroit.com. Meanwhile, crews working around the clock are still on the scene in Farmington Hills of that broken water main site, working to get water flowing, clean water through all of Oakland County and progress is being made. Officials say the 12 affected communities are still under that boil water advisory until at least late tomorrow night when the all clear will be given. Once the repairs are finished, which Nick Monticelli has been out there and tells us that they have finished the repairs, and now the 48 hours of testing is underway to ensure that the water is safe. Some hospitals and also schools have reopened and water pressure has been restored to a few thousand Farmington Hills restaurants. So progress is happening, Everett. Yes, it certainly is. We have new information this morning about this Ypsilanti man arrested by the FBI back in August who claimed that he was an ISIS supporter. The man actually admitted to making pipe bombs and watching terrorist propaganda videos. The Detroit News reports 28 year old Mohammed Ramadan is at the center of a counter terrorism investigation involving a Metro Detroit ISIS support group. He has not been charged with a terrorism related crime, but he is being held without bond. And the pharmacist from Massachusetts charged in the deadly 2012 meningitis outbreak has been cleared of murder charges. A jury found 49 year old Glenn Chin not guilty in the deaths of 76 people who were injected with mold tainted drugs. More than 700 people in 20 states were sickened with what was considered the worst public health crisis in U.S. history in recent U.S. history and he was found guilty of racketeering. Today, President Trump is expected to make a formal declaration and give a major speech on the opioid epidemic sweeping the nation. He's expected to declare it as a national emergency. The governors from Alaska, Louisville, I should say Louisiana, and also Kentucky are going to be joining President Trump at his address. Some say an emergency declaration without funding will lack the punch. It is 6.08 here on your Thursday morning, and if you buy your own health insurance. Be warned, prices are going way up. We'll tell you by how much just ahead. But first, today is the day that many have been waiting for. The final documents on JFK's assassination will be unclassified. Up next, why conspiracy theorists will likely be disappointed. Tonight. Welcome back, everybody. Today, the Detroit Public Schools Community District Superintendent, Dr. Nikolai Vitti, is set to reveal a new three-year strategic plan and also final numbers on enrollment for the district. The announcement will take place at 10 a.m. at the Charles Wright Academy on Berg Road in Detroit, and we'll be there to bring you everything that's unveiled. Also today, the demolition of the Target building at the former Northland Center will get underway. The city of Southfield plans to sell the property to make way for redevelopment. Crews are expected to begin just after 11 a.m. City of Southfield had purchased the closed Northland Center Mall at 8 Mile Road and the Lodge Freeway in October of 2015 for $2.4 million. We're back in a minute. If you love to 
Welcome back, everybody, to 612. And in just under an hour, they'll go from classified to declassified. Yes, we're talking about the John F. Kennedy files mm -hmm. about his assassination. This is a moment in history, Jason. Yeah, so many conspiracy theorists waiting on this. Some of the nation's longest held secrets about an American tragedy and a turning point in history becoming public today. Historians are hoping thousands of pages about the assassination of JFK will answer some important questions. But will they put conspiracy theories to rest or just open a new storm of conspiracy theories? The Kennedy assassination in November of 1963 launched a thriving conspiracy industry. Why was Kennedy killed? Who benefited from it? Who has the power to cover it up? The official investigation concluded that one man, Lee Harvey Oswald, a former Marine who once tried to defect to the Soviet Union, acted alone in killing the president. But one big question is still unanswered. What was Oswald doing in Mexico two months before the assassination? The real story, maybe, is that the CIA knew only seven weeks before the assassination that Oswald may have threatened the president. He returned to America in early October, and they did what the CIA always does. They told no one. In 1992, Congress decided that because so much information in the Kennedy files was classified, undermining public confidence in the investigation's conclusion, the National Archives was given 25 years to make all of it public bit by bit. And over the weekend, President Trump gave the go-ahead to release the files, even teasing the release Wednesday on Twitter. So interesting, he said. The files will be released at 7 a.m. on the National Archives website. Of course, this is assuming the CIA and the FBI didn't convince the president to keep some of it classified. We have all the information on how to find the files on the homepage of clickondetroit.com. But be warned, insiders say you won't find any bombshells. On NPR, I heard that they, the chief worry was who was going to be embarrassed. Hmm by, uh, you know, incompetence in the investigation, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. But mm -hmm. as far as like a conspiracy plot, it was the Cubans, it was the Russians. And here, there's not much there. Not much there. Well, it's we'll so wait fascinating. And see. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, let's turn things over to Kim and Brandon with a look at our frosty morning. Let's start with Brandon. Ask and you shall receive. Not because I'm on now, but I was asking for your storm pins for rain totals from the last couple of days. And here's a good one. This is coming from Wood 2002 over in Northville, almost two inches of rain. So many spots getting those soaking showers and now the dry air has moved in. Your local four storm pins is a great free app, a way to sort of social media engage uh, with other weather warriors around Metro Detroit and severe weather also tracking on storm pins is key. Let's look at some of these numbers out there right now. Frosty, no doubt about it. Lapeer 28, Sandusky 30, Emmett is 30, Macomb 29 right now. It is 31 in Oxford up north and Sterling Heights 33, Mount Clemens 33. You see uh, freezing or below freezing in most of uh, Livingston County right now. And 28 degrees Ann Arbor, 29 Manchester. It's 33 in Monroe. And so this morning we have the ingredients for frost. Clear skies, check. Light winds, check. That allows the cool air to settle. And the dry air after these two days of rain, that dry air came in last night. It is here. But the soil conditions are a little too warm for a lot of surface frost. A lot of this probably on the windshield, a little defrost, maybe a little <laughs> scraper. I don't think it's going to be that terrible, but uh, we're looking at uh, some patchy frost around through 8 a.m. Noontime, bright sunshine, 50 degrees, some high clouds coming and going, 56 for an afternoon high. We have a system coming uh, out of the west-northwest, not today, but for tomorrow. Just want to give you a sneak peek into Friday here real quickly because this is uh, probably going to hold off until the late afternoon and especially evening hours, which means your Friday night football Football games certainly could be wet, especially areas east of 275. That's Friday night through about 11 a.m. on Saturday, which means the big house should be mostly dry but cool uh, in the afternoon hours. Here is your 1 800 Hansen's weather window and proof that the winds are calm and the skies are clear out there. Beautiful look at old Glory trying to fly out there, but uh, just sort of hanging.
Yeah. Just hanging on a Friday Eve. Hanging out. Hanging on a Friday Eve. That's not a song if you were wondering no. at home. <laughs> <laughs> good try, Brandon. All right, well, good morning, everyone. Still looking great out on the roads. No accidents to report about at this time. So we've just got some construction to talk about over on the north and southbound lanes of the lodge between Forest and Grand River. One lane block between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. This will also be happening during that same time tomorrow. So you may see a slowdown if you travel over on the lodge. And then if you do travel through Royal Oak, westbound I-696 between Coolidge and the Campbell Hilton exit, there's going to have one lane blocked there between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. So keep that one in mind as well. Now let's get a live check of your, your roads right now with our 1-800 call Sam Chopper shot. We are looking down at I-75 right at the Big Beaver exit and things are good here. It's getting a little busier, but you can see that we do have great visibility this morning and roads are drier. We're looking a whole lot better than we were yesterday at this time, so it's going to be a good commute. Rhonda. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Kim. And in today's consumer headlines, Kellogg's is now apologizing for what some are calling a racist cereal box. Plus, several hundred Rite Aid stores are about to close their doors. But first, health insurance premiums here in Michigan are going up. Let's get to Mirabel Aber joining us now live from NASDAQ. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Rhonda. Uh, insurance premiums are set to rise an average of 27% for the hundreds of thousands of Michigan residents who buy their own health insurance. Consumers eligible for income-based tax credits will be protected from the increase. Enrollment for 2018 begins in a week. Eight Michigan insurers will participate in the marketplace, and the state says premiums are higher than expected because of changes in Washington. Walgreens is closing almost 600 Rite Aid locations as part of its deal to buy its smaller rival. The locations we close uh, overlap with another rival. Rite Aid or Walgreens outlet, according to a Walgreens executive. Walgreens is buying more than 1,900 Rite Aid stores for $4.3 billion in cash. And once the deal closes, Walgreens will have about the same amount of stores as CVS. Kellogg's will redesign a corn pop box after some of the art on the cover was racially insensitive. The box featured cartoon characters shaped like corn kernels in a shopping mall, but the only brown corn pop was a janitor operating a floor waxer. A Twitter user called the company out and Kellogg apologized, said it was committed to diversity and would update the artwork. That's latest in biz. Back over to you, Rhonda. All right, Kim. Uh, Kim, I'm sorry. Mirabel, thank you. Had Kim DiGiulio on the brain. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking about those mummy hot dogs. Probably. <laughs> 620 is your time, and it's now only five days away until Halloween, which means our huge costume reveal that we put so much thought, time, and effort into is going to be happening. Yes, yeah, so we want to give you a sneak peek at what this year is going to hold. And here is a full look at your costume, Rhonda. Look at that. Is it my costume, there. though? Well, you could be going out shopping for your new costume, or you could just be finishing anchoring local 4 news today. Who knows? <laughs> but I like the hat, though. This is a little bit of a hint of what we've cooked up, and we're going to continue to show you hints all the way up until Halloween morning. But make sure that you are tuned in, because I really think that we have outdone ourselves this year. Mm -hmm. That's at 6 a.m. on Tuesday morning, Halloween, when we will reveal this year's costume. We had a special screening of it, and uh, we enjoyed watching it. It was very entertaining. Yes, you are going <laughs> to have the on the floor rolling over laughing. <laughs> 621 is your time. It was an instant classic in the fall classic, the history made in last night's World Series matchup. And I'm excited to meet today's Facebook friend for the day. This is Sister Darlene Marie Shainer. She's from Livonia. She is a Felician sister of 28 years, also a newscaster wannabe, a ventriloquist, and a self-proclaimed clown. Does oh, that mean right. that she is a nun? <laughs> I love Sister Darlene. <laughs> All right, Sister Darlene. She sounds like a real fun person to be around. We are going to mail you a Happy's Pizza gift card for being our awesome Facebook friend of the day. Congratulations. Thirty six degrees at Metro Airport, a little warmer in Wayne County, urban heat island effect. It's near freezing in most of your neighborhoods, even a few upper 20s, but clear skies, bright sun at noon 50 and some high clouds, but that's about it. A uh, little more sun than that through the afternoon, middle 50s, Kim. All right, well, we are taking a look at your commute right now over on Southfield Freeway. This is right at Ford Road and visibility is looking great this morning and we don't have any accidents to report at this time. 
It was everything it was advertised to be and more to game two of the World Series. One for the history books is the Astros even the series with the Dodgers. Justin Verlander pitched six innings allowing two hits but three runs a big uh, Bombino blasted there against Verlander but the teams combined for eight home runs. Here's the thing if you went to bed early and thought the the uh, Dodgers won this one. They did not. Two home runs in the ninth inning by the Astros, and there were extra inning home runs. Bottom line is, in 11 innings, it was all Houston, 7-6, the final. It is game three tomorrow in Texas with the series even at 1-1. Back at home and the home crowd advantage played a part in the Pistons taking, taking on the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, it was uh, their third win of the season, and the Pistons won 122 to 101. Tobias Harris leading the way with 34 points. Up next, a three game road trip out west, starting with the LA Clippers Saturday, guys. Always a test for our team when we go out west, so hopefully yeah. we can come back with some wins. It is 626 and coming up next at 630 local stories for you from Waterford, West Bloomfield and Detroit. Plus caught with his pants down oh what boy. this man is accused of doing in a local store that has him facing charges. Not sure if we want to know, but first, well, that's one way to make an entrance right through the front door. It's next in today's top video. Keep it here. Welcome to the. All right, welcome back everybody. He could not wait to get in. For today's top video, a cafe in Minnesota had quite the surprise. Yeah, he came in fast too. No coffee was needed for this deer who crashed right through the glass door of Colonial Mall. The deer was apparently spooked by a nearby car as it walked around the area. A worker opened the store's back door and the deer quickly took off. In one door and out the other. It's like me when Jet's Pizza isn't open. <laughs> We're back in a minute. We're on a mission. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 6.30 starts now. The pipe is now in place and pressure testing is underway as we speak as the site of the broken water main in Oakland County. The question is, when will the water emergency be over? Plus, fists fly in the middle of the street. What led up to this road rage encounter all caught on camera? It's Telestration time with Brandon. Well, the, really already? Are I you just, ready? I just remembered that I had to do this. <laughs> As we have this cool pool of air dipping down right over the Great Lakes region, some of the coolest numbers up to the north. Have no fear. We've got some sun to put a smile on your face. Wow, the crowd roars instantly. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. But how much smiling are we doing when we started the morning out in the 30s? Listen, sunshine cures all. Think about how gloomy it's been the last few days. That is very we true. We need some sunshine around here, Brandon. This is Evrod. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it is cold, no doubt about it. Now, Metro Airport 36 above freezing, urban heat island effect. What is that? A lot of highways and byways, concrete, asphalt building. It uh, does keep the surface a little bit warmer, but many of our suburbs, Ann Arbor 28, Lapeer 28, Port Huron 28. We have 30 over in Adrian and 29 in Howell. So it is certainly cool in many of the suburbs out there. Right around freezing, maybe a little bit warmer than that as the sun comes up just before 8 o'clock. But bright skies and 50 degrees through lunchtime. The winds are a lot lighter today with a mix of sun and high clouds. 56 degrees, a little below normal, but a very nice day today. Middle 50s, we could hit 60 degrees tomorrow. We have a little warm front that is moving up from the south and it will be bringing warm air. It also also will spark some of these showers to our west to come into your Friday forecast. I'll have that coming up. Want to get it to Kim DeGiulio and for live traffic in the meantime. Finally, dry roads. Yes, dry roads to start off this Thursday morning. And that's not what we were dealing with yesterday or a lot of days this week. So we've had some tricky commutes. So luckily we're not dealing with that today. However, I want to let you know about something that could slow you down over in Van Buren Township. This is construction that's been going on uh, on the westbound 
southbound side of Ecorse Road, but it's actually ending today, so that is some good news. This is right at Michigan Avenue here. It's been closed and it's going to reopen at 6 o'clock tonight, so that is good news for the, those of you who travel that way. But I do want to show you what your roads look like right now, so let's take a live look with our 1-800 call Sam Chopper shot. This is I-75 right at I-375. It's getting busier out there, but still looking great. Visibility, visibility looks great as well, and if you're headed downtown this morning, this is what your commute looks like. Nothing to slow you down. Back to you. Thank you, Kim. It is 6:33, and Detroiters might now have a better idea of who they're voting for in this year's mayoral election after Mayor Mike Duggan and State Senator Coleman Young II debated last night. Yes, and they sparred the two on many issues, including car insurance rate, racial division, and also the potential for that new Amazon headquarters. Here's a preview. We have a chance to pass driver's choice right now to put $700 in the pockets of the average Detroiter, $1,000 in the pocket of every senior citizen, and I'm tired of our legislators in Lansing having excuses why they can't get anything done. All you're doing is taxing poor people and people who are mandated to buy a product that they can't afford. They charge based on your sex, they charge based on your race, they charge based on your occupation, they charge based on your education. It's wrong. Now, a lot of accusations were made during the debate, but one comment from Coleman Young II is getting a lot of attention. It is time to take back the motherland. It is time to take our freedom back. Vote for change. Vote for Coleman Young for mayor. If you would like to see the entire debate in its entirety, we have it posted on the homepage of clickondetroit.com. Well, this morning, major progress is being made. The pipe that's needed to get water flowing again in several Oakland County communities is now in place. Let's go live now to Local 4's Nick Monticelli, who is in West Bloomfield, right there at 14 Mile and Drake, where emergency crews have been working nonstop. We can hear them behind you. They, you know, they have been working around the clock, and they were actually pretty happy to show off what they have accomplished. I'm not going to walk too far because I don't want to fall in the hole, which you can see right down there, that white section is the part of the main that had to be replaced. That is done now. The pressure testing is underway, so we are much, much closer to getting Oakland County residents back to normal. I think the diameter of the water main was 48 inches, so it's a very, very large main. So uh, yeah, definitely a major effort to fix it. The water main break underneath 14 Mile Road in West Bloomfield has become a bit of a tourist attraction, but a lot of people here want to see firsthand how much progress is being made, which affects how much longer they'll have to boil their water. Yesterday, the replacement pipes arrived from Illinois, and this morning, after careful and methodical installation, the new pipe is in. Now, pressure testing is underway to make sure the new main holds up, then it will be disinfected and flushed, and finally, they'll test the water quality. If the test results come back clear, the boil water advisory will be lifted, and the Great Lakes Water Authority still expects that to happen by tomorrow night. In the meantime, there are still about 35,000 residents in Farmington Hills without water at all. But residents like Steve Smart are trying to keep everything in perspective. Unlike Flint, people are still suffering from, you know, main issues with their water. So with here, it's a little inconvenient if we're, you know, down for a few days, you know, we can get by. So I just want to make it absolutely perfectly crystal clear that even though you see that that water main is replaced and it is fixed, that does not mean it is safe to drink your water. They still have a lot more work to do. Again, testing the lines, disinfecting the lines, testing the water quality to make sure that it's safe for you to drink at home. Again, hopefully by tomorrow night, but I've and Rhonda, this is a huge, huge deal. We're live here in West Bloomfield at Monticelli. Local 4 News today. And there are so many families that are excited to see that we are so close to this getting fixed and, and over with. Is there any chance? I know we said Friday night, but is there any chance that everything will be fixed any sooner than tomorrow? No, definitely not, because they still have to do all the pressure testing. They want to check those lines. They want to make sure, most importantly, that the water quality is safe. That can't happen any sooner than 48 hours. All right. Well, we will take their word for that and uh, just hold on tight. 
and Friday will be here before we know it. <laughs> Nick, thank you. It is 637, everybody. Right now, we want to get to more stories that we're following for you all across Metro Detroit this morning. Yes, and those include stories from Woodhaven and Waterford. But first, we do want to get you updated on this story out of Troy, where a Detroit man was arrested for exposing himself to several women at a Kohl's department store there. 23-year-old Ernest Lee is charged with indecent exposure and obstruction following an incident at Kohl's on John R. Loss prevention officers at the store observed the man coming into close contact with the women and exposing himself. He has been arrested. And in Waterford for now, those who know the burdens that come with having a car accident rallied against the fight to get rid of no fault insurance in order to lower auto insurance rates in Michigan, particularly House Bill 5013. They say that it would put limits on medical claims and essentially bankrupt some of the families. Flatline four times, a $250,000 cap and then $25,000 in rehab. That's a weekend in my life. Well, HB 5013, House Bill 5013, is sponsored by State Rep. Lena Theus, and she represents the Brighton area and says that the current auto insurance system isn't sustainable and that something needs to be done. Over in Woodhaven, the Down River Junior Football League held a hearing on Wednesday night, and the executive board upheld a previous decision to not let the children of Woodhaven, the student athletes, of the Woodhaven Warriors and the cheer squad play in any postseason activities. Now it all stems from when some parents from the Warriors team and other teams got into a heated exchange during a game. It's about the kids. I mean, it, there has to be some other way to get the communication across so the adults change so it doesn't affect the kids. Yeah, you certainly feel for these kids. No word on if the team will try to protest the decision. It is 639 now on your Thursday morning. Let's send things over to Jason in studio to see what he's working on coming up. It is a community effort to beat bullying. How you can join the conversation coming up. Hank. It's not your typical looking Halloween pumpkin, but a teal colored pumpkin could help keep your child safe on Halloween. I'll show you how in my Help Me Hank report. Sky Forge. Oh, well, welcome back. A violent fight broke out in a Connecticut street. I mean, right in the middle of the street and surveillance camera from a city bus caught the whole thing. Police say that the incident started after one man reported that another man assaulted him at a home with a hammer. Police say that the two knew each other, but don't know the motive. They released this video in hopes to find a third man who drove up, got out of his car, kicked the man on the ground, got back in his car and took off. Pretty unusual scene there. That was some fight. Well, for kids, Halloween is a night of costumes, candy, fun. Yeah, but trick or treating for some can be dangerous. Our consumer investigator Hank Winchester has an easy way for you to provide treats for kids with allergies, and it's all done with a pumpkin. The teal color pumpkin you see there, it stands out. It should, and it will on Halloween night because if it's placed in front of a home, that person is telling you they're handing out treats that are safe for kids with allergies. I love dressing up as Belle from Beauty and the Beast. I was Red Ranger, and that's a costume that stuck out to me. I was the Statue of Liberty once. <laughs> On Halloween night, trick-or-treaters will be dressed up in all sorts of costumes with one goal in mind, candy. And while candy is obviously the go-to, you need to remember one in 13 kids has a food allergy. So a candy bar loaded with nuts could send a child with a nut allergy to the hospital. If you plan on providing other treats for kids with allergies at your home, place a teal pumpkin on your porch. It is the sign that you have treats safe for all kids. We bought this plastic one and just painted it, but you can also buy teal pumpkins at craft stores or bigger box retailers. Need an idea for what to give out? Halloween pencils, stickers, even glow sticks. Just remember to keep it all in a separate bowl from the candy itself. Beyond looking for the teal pumpkin on Halloween night, we have more safety tips and information for you and your family before you head out with your children on Halloween. Everything you need to know will be found on the Help Me Hank page at clickondetroit.com. I'm Hank Winchester. Help Me Hank. What a great program. Yeah, it's a very good idea. And yeah. here's the thing on my to-do list here, mm -hmm. buy Halloween candy. Oh, what are you going to buy? Oh, well, my favorites, of course. I know. Isn't Reese's, that how it works? <laughs> Kit Kats, Crunch Bars. Maybe a few mini Snickers for me. Just okay. grab a handful. And I'll leave them on your desk. Okay.
<laughs> deal. What's your favorite Halloween candy, Brandon? Bit of honey and those, uh, Jason, what are those, uh, the black and orange wrapped peanut no, buttery No, that's nugget. your favorite? Those are nice. Reese's. No, well, no not. The ones that are in like the, they're like old school. Yeah, the wax paper. Wax paper. The ones that nobody wants. Bring them my One way. One of them's like black licorice flavor. Let's go. I you love like it. that? I love it. Wow. I'm not joking. I don't know if it's my favorite, but I just, you know, I'm an oddball. Whoa. Uh, local four storm pinner here, Jalishma 15 from St. Clair, showing a cool cloud yesterday. You can kind of see the LCL, the lifted condensation level here, where the cloud level begins. This is not a storm shelf uh, cloud, but uh, these are the uh, showers and clouds that were leaving yesterday afternoon over in St. Clair. And then want to show you one other one here, kind of cool. Uh, this one is, I believe, is this? There it is. Check this out. The skeletons in Mad High, Madison Heights. This is Buck 1127. I do have your Halloween forecast coming up, but look at the one skeleton with the umbrella. You might need it coming up. It's cool out there right now and it is clear. We're talking about the Halloween shower chances. 28 degrees in Lapeer, 31 in Howell, near freezing out there at the bus stop. So maybe some light gloves and a thicker jacket this morning, but sun and high clouds, 55 this afternoon. We're looking good uh, with this warm front tomorrow, bringing us to near 60, but showers possible by about 6 or 7 p.m. Uh, again on uh, Friday afternoon or evening, looking ahead to Halloween, 40s, breezy, a chance for a couple of showers. It's early, so we're not locked into that, uh, but it does at least look cloudy and breezy as we head into early next week. And again, rain chances tomorrow evening through about 10 or 11 a.m. on Saturday. So if your church has a little trunk or treat, uh, later is better for that on Saturday. Uh, tomorrow night, try to get it in before 7 p.m. I tonight will be at this Evening with the Stars, a Dancing with the Stars event that uh, helps to raise money for Full Circle Foundation, helping special needs families uh, on the east side mainly. And again, I'm going to be dancing tonight at the Rooster Tail and hoping to raise money. We've got all the information in the Scene on 4 tab. Click on Detroit.com. Kim? Vote for Brandon. Oh, he's practicing. That was, that was good. Well, maybe a little bit more practice for tonight. Okay. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Uh, we are having a great morning out there. Look at our maps this morning. This is a look at the big picture. No accidents to worry about right now. We're just talking about some construction over on northbound I-75 between 8 Mile and I-696. One lane block there between 7 a.m. and 3 p.m. This also happening tomorrow as well, so expect to slow down there. Also on northbound I-75, right at Square Lake, one lane blocked there. During that same time, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. and tomorrow as well. Now I want to give you a look at what your roads look like with our 1-800 call Sam Chopper shot and this is a pretty shot of Southfield Freeway right at I-96 and it's getting busier out there but still no problems and conditions are good for your morning drive. Over to you. Thank you Kim. The purpose is simple. Find ways to work together to build community to stop bullying among all ages. Joining me this morning is Kevin Epling, co-director of Bully Police USA. Kevin, you are hosting a conversation today. Conversation on bullying, and this is our second one, thanks to Defeat the Label here out of Detroit and Mimic Insurance. We're bringing people together, and this is educators, parents, you know, and talk about this issue. And I think that's one of the most important things we can do. As, as a nation, we're looking and we're talking about the opioid epidemic. Sure. We need to still be talking about this bullying epidemic that has been going on for close to 15 years you know, in our schools. And by giving parents and teachers more information every time that, and getting feedback from the students, that's what's so important. There might be a parent watching right now whose child is uh, the victim in a bullying scenario. What would you tell them? Well, I think the first thing is they have to report these things to the school because under the Matt Epley and Safe School Law, which was passed in two, uh, 2012, they have to have some reporting mechanism. If there are incidents going on at the school, the school needs to be notifying the parents. So I always tell parents the best thing that they can possibly do is to look at what the state law says and what the school policy says, cross-reference those, and ask a lot of questions. You know, ask what have you guys been doing over the last seven years 
to really kind of tackle this issue. What if that same parent feels like they need to come hear you speak, come be part of the conversation? Who's going to be at the conversation? Where is it going to take place? Uh, the conversation is going to be in Waterford, and we have Tom Izzo is going to be one of our keynote speakers. To go kick green. The day, go white and kick the day off. We have six breakout sessions throughout the day, and then Justice uh, Bernstein is going to come and close us out for the day. And also we're going to have a panel of students that I'm going to be talking with them specifically about you know, bullying and the stress it adds to their lives. So when you talk to the students, what do you often hear? A lot of times you know, you'll hear from students that people aren't listening to them and people aren't reacting when they're telling them that things are going wrong. So my big thing for all the time I've been dragged into this is empowering those students, but at the same time we have to get adults to really listen and react when those students are telling them things. Schools really need to have a five-year plan, not be thinking that every six months, let's change and let's do something. Let's make a five-year plan that we can really do something. All right, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. today at Oakland Schools in Waterford. Thank you so much, Kevin, for Thank being you. here. Thank you very much. Good mission and an important one, too. It is. Let's go back to you guys. Quite the lineup of speakers Absolutely. as well. Yeah, very important very information. Impactful. All right, it is 651, everybody. And today's stories to watch for are coming up next. Keep it here. Welcome back, everybody. It's 654 here on your Thursday morning. Some stories to watch for repair work at that broken water main in Farmington Hills is now complete and now pressure testing on that new pipe is underway. Later today, water quality testing will begin. If the water is clear, the boil water alert will be lifted. That's expected to happen by tomorrow night. President Trump is expected to declare a national public health emergency later today in response to the whole opioid crisis. He promised during the campaign to aggressively take on the emergency and today will be the first major step that he takes in tackling the issue. And in a few minutes, the National Archives will release tens of thousands of government documents surrounding the assassination of former President John F. Kennedy. Historians say that it could shed some light on what the CIA knew about Lee Harvey Oswald prior to the assassination. Jason. Today on ClickOnDetroit.com, the cost of college tuition is on the rise again. Uh, a big surprise, right? See what you'll be up against if you or your child are planning to get an advanced degree. That is on our education page at ClickOn. Plus, a great reason to show video of adorable animals, how you can help celebrate Adopt-A-Dog Month. Yeah, it's a thing on the All for Pets page. Also, the eight money mistakes new parents should avoid. We have that on the family page. And, of course, we'll see you back here live at 9.15-ish on Facebook. Back to you. We will be tuning in, Jason. Thank you so much, and good morning. A chilly start. 28 Ann Arbor, 28 Lapeer, 34 in Monroe, 35 degrees uh, at Metro Airport in Detroit. Later today, though, sunshine, a few waves of high clouds, but a really nice one. Light winds, 56 degrees. Tomorrow, near 60, but we do have rain coming in. Could be right around kickoff time for Friday night football. Out of here by... The big game at the big house. All right, thank you, Brandon. Well, taking a look at your roads right now, we do have one problem to let you know about. This is over on eastbound I-696. Right at I-75, there is an accident blocking the left lane. All right, well, after hundreds of nominations and thousands of votes, it's time to announce our four frenzy winner for best spirit squad. <laughs> <laughs> the winner is the Wyandotte Roosevelt High School Bears cheerleading team. <laughs> they say that they had their phones alarm set every hour to vote, and I had the chance to visit the girls yesterday, and they were thrilled about their accomplishment. They said that they would not be where they are today without the support of their families and are grateful for the support of their community. Allen Park High School took second place in our competition, and Carleton Airport High School came in third. Carleton. Well, congratulations <laughs> All right. to Wyandotte. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thanks for being with us, everybody. We we'll hope you have a great day and get through the frost this morning. Yes. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. And Brandon, Enjoy good luck Friday to you. Eve. Thank you, Dan. Dancing tonight. Hope you, you got this, Brandon. See you.